Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new series of Crusader Kings 2 here on the Lord Master channel in which this time in this new series we're going to play as a another small slash minority culture that I have a tendency to play as just like with the previous series with Bosnia, Ragusa, Assyria and uh, down there in South India where which was the last time we did that series as of a Tamil culture later expanded the Empire India which was quite possibly the largest empire I've ever controlled in any of my series I've done. Well don't expect that anytime soon in this new series in which this story takes place in Central Asia over there in the land of Sogdiana the homeland of the Sogdian people. That's who I'm playing as this time, the Sogdians, in which uh, they, it's like we say that's a mind, smaller minority cultures because they don't have a, you know, an independent state except for this one at the Fergana Valley, but that is a Muslim power. They are related to the Persians, the Afghans, Baloch, Chaka, and Tokarians. So they belong to the Iranian culture group. Which again, Sogdiana was an ancient Iranian civilization that at different times included territory located in present day Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. Sogdiana was also a province of the Achaemenid Empire um, back in ancient times. In the, uh, which is 18th in the list of the Vilhustun inscription of Darius the Great, the Persian Emperor. In the Avasta, one of the Zoroastrian holy texts, Sogdiana is listed as the second best land that the supreme deity Ahura Mazda had created. It comes second after Arianumveja, which is the homeland of the Aryans, which is from the book, uh, in the Zoroastrian book of the Venididad indicating the importance of this region from ancient times. And again, Sogdiana, which is just... Yeah, all the Sogdian people, where they stand? That's Sogdiana, where they live traditionally. Which, so again, Sogdiana was first conquered by Cyrus the Great, the founder of the Achaemenid Empire. The region would then be annexed by the Macedonian ruler Alexander the Great in 828 BC. The region would continue to change hands under the Seleucid Empire, the Greco-Bactrian Kingdom, the Kushan Empire, the Heptephlite Empire, and finally the Sassanian Empire. So Sogdiana has seen a lot of history of being occupied by foreign powers. So, but however, the Sogdian states were never politically united, and they were centered on the main city of Samarkand, as we point this county over here. So, but our story here is next to Samarkand is Bukhara. We have Bukhara, of which I serve the liege of Emir Jabril of the Bajanid Emirate. And now let me introduce you to this character that I've created specifically for the beginning of this series. And it does have a little bit of a inspiration behind this of the reason of why I wanted to do the Sogdian series and why unlike some of the previous series where I have a tendency to start as male and why start one with a female so this is Sheikha which is Sheik uh, the female form of Sheik equivalent of Count or Countess her name is Roxana Roxana of Bukhara and the house name is Kayani because I picked the one that has to be easy to pronounce Sogdian names Now, the name Roxana might be familiar to some of you Western viewers because, um, you know, yeah, Westerners do use that name sometimes. Um, unless you know a girl or, uh, or a woman or somebody famous that had the name Roxana or Roxanne and whatnot, these variants of names. And you may recall that Roxana was, uh, at least back in, you know, ancient times, Sog uh, in Sogdiana. That Roxana was the name specific 
that uh, that there was this woman named that who was the wife of Alexander the Great, which is the one that bore him uh, a child, his only son, Alexander the Fourth, which makes him half Greek and half Sogdian. And we know all that, all that, how that went out. You know what happened after, you know, the empire, the Macedonian Empire. But now here, for Roxana of Bukhara, based on those traits, I gave her tough soldier, and also legitimized bastard. Um, she's shrewd-minded. She's a novice fighter, which is just in part of the uh, the orders of chivalry mod. One of the many mods that I'm using for this series, just like with the previous one. But I added, but I removed one of the mods that I use, and I added w another one of the mods that I, we're using for this series, which we'll tell you that a little later on. She's also kind, trusting, stubborn, and diligent. This character has inspiration behind it. Not because of the Roxana name, or named her in honor of, you know, the Roxana, the wife of Alexander. No, no, no. Oh. The other day, I was re-watching some of the old, um, oh, not that old, I mean, it's fairly recent. I was re-watching the uh, Star Wars sequel trilogy, where it has its main protagonist, Rey, um, in which I thought about this as, it's like, you know what, I'm going to use Rey as an inspiration for the creation of this character. Of course, you know, she's a Sogdian and a Zoroastrian. And those traits that I picked out is uh, based on what Ray's personality and traits had from the Force Awakens movie, um, like when we first are introduced to her. So you can say that she's a Sogdian or Zoroastrian version of Ray of sorts, although it wouldn't go that far. Even though, if you look at her portrait, sure there might be some facial resemblance. <laughs> Except for that little green hat, but I guess I'm wearing that because, of, you know, she's a shaika now. If she wasn't that, she wouldn't be wearing that stuff. And the shirt would be, you know, like a poor peasant girl's gray shirt, um, if she didn't have a title. But now in Bukhara, which is, which I mentioned before, that the, uh, the Sogdians were never politically united. They were all separated by city-states, principalities, kind of similar to the Greek city-states of old. And interestingly, when I was looking at the history out of all the counties, uh, which they don't pick up on that history, but Bukhara's got some history on it. Let me show you. As far as the earliest documented is concerned in Bukhara. So from House Kuda, which we succeeded in this, which by the way, real house, the first one, Marzoband, which is the Iranian culture for count, basically. So this is Bindu, which he died in battle. Then he was succeeded by him, who died under suspicious circumstances. In AKA assassinated, in which this man is still alive today. Um, his son, I'll show you in a moment as we get up there. And then Kunuk, he was executed um, by by this um, Arabian man. So this happened during the period of the um, the Muslim conquest of Sogdiana. And then succeeded by another one named. I was about to say, wait a minute, is he the same person? Fifty-eight. Fifty. Oh yeah, that's the same person. Oh, okay. So at some point he'd lost his title to him. And then he was executed, and then he's brought back to power, and then he, of course, he got assassinated for that. And this man, also assassinated. And then this man, also assassinated. So, Bukhara, in this region of Sogdiana, has seen some infamy. And then came Bunyat, in which he's still alive today, and... I'll make him a commander out of him yet, since he's an organizer, and he's got an artifact with him. He's got the Cloak of Muhammad, a cloak that's been worn by the Prophet Muhammad. This alone is reason enough to accord it a shrine of the highest importance. 
although useless to us Zoroastrians, but, you know, if he dies, and as long as he lives in this court, it's going to go to me. So, one way to think is, I better keep this thing from enemy hands. By enemy, we mean, well, the ones who occupy Sogdiana right now by the Emir. And then came Roxana, inherited, so to speak, rather than, unless you want to conjure up a fictional story, I mean, this, this being Crusader Kings, of course, um, you could say on, on the beginning of 769, which we could say approximate, just like everybody's birthdays, well, except he has an actual birthday, um, that he thought one day that he saw Roxanne and, and thought she should be the next ruler of Wakar. We're going to break tradition here. Uh, based on Bunyan's skill, he would rather be more suited as a commander than just be ruler of Wakar. And plus, he think it would be smart enough to, I don't know, escape from possible assassination knowing what's been happening in Bukhara's history. So he thought, oh, let's put a woman in here because, you know, that would be breaking tradition, at least the Sogdian tradition. I mean, not the Muslims one, because, you know, there are not, not many Muslims here and live here in Sogdiana. There's reasons for that at this timeline. So, again, I am Roxana of Bukhara, and I'm ready for whatever it takes. But now, here's some other noted characters. Golden West. Dashhoots is ran by a Persian Muslim who also has sympathy for Christian religions as the region here is the majority population are Nestorian Christians. Here is Zoroastrian. Kiva is ran by Turkish Sunni, although no relations to the Yabguit Turkish, which many of them are still Tengri, and he's got an artifact too. Tengri's favor. It'll favor him in the long run. While his, you know, Turkish, um, again, this is probably a remnant of the old Turkic cognate, which had a long expansion from, from Mongolia all the way through there before they fragmented. And I guess these are probably one of the Turkish migrants that moved down to the, um, what's the alternate name of Sogdiana? Transoxiana, yeah. That's what they call it. And Kiva is the traditional capital of it. And if we were to have Sogdiana, I would rather make Samarkand as a capital because Sogdian. While further west, there's some Persian Zoroastrians. And of course, we know the Emir, we've already met him, and he doesn't like me, which I'll change that. Up there, here's a, another Sogdian. But he's of a Kuramazda, which is a syncretic form of Zoroastrianism, which was practiced among the Sogdians, mixes Zoroastrianism with Hinduism, Buddhism, and various pagan faiths. Aside from Kuramazda, lesser deities such as Weshpakar, God of Wind, are worshipped and made offerings, usually in the form of small statues. Yeah, but there is a Sogdian Sunni Muslim, which one can think he's probably one of the newer converts but his heir is a Buddhist and then there's Sheikha Hashem who is a real-life character or shall we say historical character in which he's already married but no children yet but as you can see he's already disfigured he's quick-minded he was a peasant leader so, so. I mean, I wouldn't care to look him up. I mean, if you want to look up, remember, his name is Hashem Mukhanid. If you are curious to look him up. And also, he's a Mazdaki, another Zoroastrian heresy. Mazdak was a Zoroastrian priest who claimed to be a prophet of Uhura Mazda. He attempted to reform the religion with Gnostic elements and advocated communal possessions and welfare programs. His teachings fell out of favor with the Shansha Kadvan in the first in 524, but pockets of their heresies survived in remote areas. This heresy has no formal head and no special game mechanics. His wife, Karluk Tengri. 
which I don't know if she's documented. Although I could tell you a little more about... Oh, another Sogdian Kurumazda man that lives up there. And he's got the tongue of the famous holy man. Once spoke many elegant truths. And then there's the Sogdian Muslims of Fergana. But as you can see, there's, I mean, despite the fact that Sunni Islam is in the majority on some areas, especially if it's land of origin. But many populations in Persia and Transoxiana are still Zoroastrian, with a small pocket of Nestorian Christians, Kurmastas up in the north, and Buddhists of the east. So, Sogdians, people themselves, there's another reason, possibly one of the reasons why they're never politically united, because they all worship different faiths, and this is largely due to the transmission of the Silk Road, with its merchants and traders, um, bringing their uh, faiths and ideas into the region. So, one can think that, I mean, I mean, the Sogdian history isn't as rich as some of the many ancient civilizations, but it's really, really fascinating, at least to me. So, yeah, Samarkand, potential trade post, which no doubt my liege will build it. And here, Silk Road runs through here. Which me may get a small income for this. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, so we got four holdings here to start off with. He gets five. Next door in Kiva, four holdings. Up there, three. And down two. So we'll just pick. We're just pointing out the surrounding counties as to say which lands are prosperous and whatnot, and what makes good money. And speaking of good money, council. I already named a cartographer before I hit record, so I could show you the resource. So here, not a lot of resource. Samarkan has a shepherd community, and over here we have tannery. So I guess we're maybe a bit lucky. I think these are two equal qualities. If a member of the trade league was around, then he would use the said resource. Which again, great trade league is one of the mods that I use for this series. I have you on standby. So for now, the council looks pretty decent, but let me see. I don't know if I want to trust that man as my spy master because he's a Nestorian Christian, therefore infidel. And but if I give him that position, maybe he could become a pragmatist or a glory hound. Ah, give it a sh. Well. Better yet, I think you probably want to look at other characters, see if they got better intrigue than the current. Okay, look again. 14 versus 11 for the second highest. But as for much. Now, the Mobad. Well, he's already got that position, but you just wait, because um, I've already invited somebody over, but now, is there anyone with better intrigue? It has to be a man, because we don't have, you know, marginal, you know, status of women. I guess I'll bring you in, even though you kind of like me a bit more, but the problem is, when I bring you in, you're going to dislike me for being a bit of a foreigner, but nonetheless. So I already invited a man with a high learning skill, and now I'm inviting a man with high intrigue skill. And when I said high learning, that means no need to re recruit a court physician for me to spend money on. Which, speaking of money, I'll get to that in a moment. But first, let me choose a patron deity, which I could choose a personal patron among the Amesha Spentas of the Zoroastrian faith. Since I'm all about... I should dedicate myself to a particular angel and let their power inform my rule. Again, none of them have martial, and this is coming from somebody who has experience playing as a Zoroastrian. If you recall the Sanula Tovic series, which I often call the series Zoroastrian Croatia. 
And since I have no air, I mean, I can't do Amaritat. So instead, I guess I'll do Kshatra... Oh, sorry. Uh, Kshatriya Vira... I mean, it's that first word. It just reminds me of Kshatriya because, you know, Sanskrit. But then again, the Avastan language and the uh, Sanskrit language are very, very closely related. So I will dedicate to this patron angel, which hurts my learning a bit, but it lowers the bill to time. Because, you know, we need money, and we need it fast. And that's going to be that moral of the story. Just because I'm a nice girl doesn't mean I could be nice to people who, you know, shouldn't have that much money to begin with, and we need the money to build up the levees locally. So we can expand from within before we take on the Emir. In which I will start swaying the Emir. But is there anyone with very good diplomacy? And you got good learning skill, but too bad you're Manichaean, but I'll still have you. I don't think the mayor's gonna like Chris unless I give him a different position. Bunyat should be a commander. Okay, okay, I got it. You will be the marshal. And him? Well, he can buzz off. So Lucian, the Manichaean, will be improving diplomatic relations with the Emir. As we await for the two people we're inviting, so we can put them in a place in the council. Council. For now. The mayor's my around Spaboon. And I will switch my focus to war, further increasing the combat skill, as I will be joining the, um, the sand pit, the fighter's guild. Travelers can sometimes see massive circles dug into the dunes. One may think there are what dried oases, but they only find blood soaked sand. These sand pits are the arenas in which the members of this fighter's guild bet their lives for glory. They will not hesitate to cut down heads for money and will provide their martial services to anyone to improve their prestige. Few can stand unfaced in the front of these children of the sands. I will join it as I have all the requirements to do so. Well met, Roxana. You have the highest honor to receive a letter from me. Kazan, a champion of the Sandpit, the greatest warrior the world has ever known. I have no doubt that you wish to bask in my glory in person, so I hereby allow you to join us as we clash, steal, and bleed together. Good luck, and may your blade never dull. So, he's the current champion. Persian must... There are reasons for that. He's the champion. He's the best for now. And by the way, real character. I just saw that. I know who to appoint. It's going to be you. So I don't think we should worry about commanders anytime soon. I like how I will name my cartographer. No, no, no. The greedy. Don't want somebody to steal your money. Sure, why not? Have a man with a list be the designated regent. And remember I said we need money now? We're going to extort subjects. Yes, day one as Sheikha of Bukhara. We're going to extort the money. The money for that war chest is not going to raise itself. I decided to take matters in my own hands and see to that the chest gets filled to the brim with donations from my lowest subjects. How should I proceed? You wouldn't want to do triple taxation because of peasant revolt, but the clergy of Bukhara surely does not eat all that wealth. Of course, that means I'll get a tyrant penalty for about five years and lose a bit of piety. Matter of fact, negative piety. Oh, and about I would gain a hundred gold. As I load them, as my men load the wealth of the Varum of Bukhara onto several wagons, I am approached by a raving group of clergymen. Apparently they are not too happy about me seizing their valuable idols. 
They claim that I will be punished by Ahriman if I cannot justify this blasphemy. Ahriman be damned. The wealth does more good in my coffers. So, this Herbad um, is now my rival. Which one would think I would duel him, but I don't want to do that because... You know, I'll be known as a priest hater, and that's not a nickname I would want to have for, for, a, you know, a, a young nice girl. So, so well, now we're up to that, and now let's borrow money from the Jewish merchants, in which I will never pay them back. Not because I don't like Jews. No, 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 no. It's because, well. One day, the emir is going to expel the Jews, so I don't have to repay them. And whenever the next ruler invites the Jews back in, then I can borrow more money from them. That is, of course, um, we would have to, you know, increase our domain, domain, and we get more money through taxation from the mayors and herbats. You know, after we kick the Sunni Muslims out of the region before we take on the Emir, which is probably going to be a few episodes from on. And now, what am I going to do with that money, you say? Get me a weapon. If I want to be, you know, really, I need to improve my combat skill. And we could start small. It's like all you need to do is some training, get your weapon and armor. And then you will have it. Well, by you will have it, I mean, I have a tendency to be theatrical and not choose my own words to write because I'm going to be honest with you. This type of series I'm doing, I don't have a single major goal. I think the major goal is just survive. Not just for this character, but of this dynasty, this culture, this faith. All that has to survive. So this is probably going to be the most challenging series I've ever done. I thought the Indian one was more challenging. But no, what it taught me is the claimants. And then we were able to unite India and then we expanded out west. But now in this series for the Sogdians, one would think is, well, we have to kick these guys out. But we only have to do it when the time is right. Because, you know. The Abbasids, they'll be watching. They're always going to be watching. Now, one last act before we finally get the series moving, since it's been nearly 30 minutes after I gave you a little bit of Sogdian history, which I, I'll tell more of as the episode progresses or in the next few ones. Over there, that Bavadid dynasty which I'm sure many YouTubers have done many Zoroastrian playthroughs with that dynasty. Which mine will be different because it's Sogdian, not Persian. But he has the blood of Sassan, the founder of the Sassanid dynasty, known as a great warrior, hunter, and high priest of the Zoroastrian faith, founded on the 1st of November, 130 AD. And this was he. Or, that's what they so think. So yeah, plenty of descends are alive today, and that's the reason why I started this series as a female. I can matrilineally marry somebody, and so the children can have that bloodline. And I found a man, Dandamir. He's one of the commanders of the Western Protectorate because some of the Persians or Astrians fled east to China. Even the last Sassanid. Um, who walked the earth, so to speak, went to China as well. So now, the question I must ask you is, will you marry me? He will say yes, because the age is right. I'm 16, he's 18, and he likes my skills. Good. Good. Though he has sympathy for Eastern religions, which... You know, I'm sure the Sogdian Buddhists will probably respect you more. Despite the fact you're a foreigner. The two people you are inviting are foreigners. So, let's go. Let's begin.
as we fulfill the ambition to build a war chest after we build up something big. And now groom an heir to increase fertility. So we can have sons and daughters that will lead this dynasty. But now it's Roxana's story. It's just beginning. Oh, and here's another thing I must spend. Militia training ground. Oh yeah, you hate me now. You won't contribute much. But who's a better steward? Well, time to find another better person to invite who's a very competent steward. Look at you. I'm glad not all hope is lost for the Persian Zoroastrians who are looking for work. Come to Bukhara. Which, by the way, in real life today, Bukhara is a beautiful city. And we don't know what Bukhara may have looked like before, before the Muslim conquests. So, Dad Demir and Sheikh Roxana are getting married. We could collect the role lady duty to pay for the ceremonies. Since I'm all about money, get it. Thank you, Protector General. Which, of course, you're zealous to the Taoist faith and call me an infidel, but no difference. I'm not phased. Coming in. We got one more coming. If he comes. Oh. Oh, wait. Did I not already invite this person? Oh, he's still pending. What took you so long? Anyways. Let's put you guys in the council. More competent ones. At least you're neutral. And you're much suited for that type of work. And this good looking man here. Is going to be the Mobad. I mean... I mean, can you imagine when women come to the court and they'll, and they'll look at this religious man of cloth? And he says, oh, look at this handsome man. And he's like, oh, don't worry about me. I'm chaste. But I'm still a nice person. But for some reason, he's a bit ambitious as well. But I think he's just trying to be a good religious man at heart. And since I have the patron angel to build buildings fast, this is going to be done in November. We can improve that. In which it'll be done in the 3rd of May. Impressive. Oh, and now that the handsome man is here, you're also the new court physician. The first court physician under my rule of the car. Again, the land of Tra Transoxiana or Sogdiana for us Sogdians here, is mainly steppe, which this is what it looks like, it's what a steppe looks like typically. So yeah, it's mainly steppe territory, with a, with further east you go there's plains until you go up the hills, and, and the Fergana Valley also has plains so it's more, more fertility of the land. As the winter starts to leave, so this is what it looks like up close in our land. It's not desolate. It is said that it's the second best land that Uhuru Mazda created. But uh, speaking of Uhuru Mazda, let me, let me uh, reintroduce you to what the Zoroastrian faith is about for those who are unfamiliar. Since I mentioned the heresies, but now Zoroastrianism proper. Zoroastrians worship Ahura Mazda, the uncreated god as proclaimed by the ancient Iranian prophet Zoroaster. It is the official religion of all the Persian empires, except the Hellenic Seleucid Empire, until the Muslim conquest of the Sassanid Empire in 651. The ancient form of the religion involved great sacred hill top fires, hilltop fires, the exposure of dead bodies to scavenger birds for cleansing, and religious close kin marriages in imitation of Ahura Mazda and Zoroaster. And as you can see, those other features 
Well, more than more bad. Um, that's that's our religious head, which we don't have one, so it doesn't matter. Although our priests can inherit titles if they want to, and the close kin marriages we mention um, improves vassal opinions, which I don't have much of vassals, and one of them is extremely mad at me. <laughs> Anyways, my Aran Spavod um, Navialman has told me about a remarkable weaponsmith residing in Dash Holds. Uh, he suggests I invite the man to my court to see to work for myself. If he manages to impress me, I could order my own custom made item. Oh, great. A lazy weaponsmith. Whatever. I got money. And the Bajanids have declared war to liberate Serdaya. Sogdian land in which he's willing to be you know free from his wage who's a Karluk Tengri but his heir Nestorian Christian once the weapon center craftsmanship has been checked by my most knowledgeable attempts to ensure the quality was sufficient I received him in the throne room he introduced himself as Master Ramtish and gestured towards his new assistants who all carried examples of his work does my Sheikh huh? Have anything special in mind? Yeah, all these bonuses to troops, but since I'm of a count tier level, shikdom, so to speak, um, we will only get tier one, quality one artifacts, so you won't get troop bonuses or cavalry bonus for that matter. So you can never go wrong with a good sword. So he's got this many troops. Oh, he's already getting sick this early. That's unfortunate. And in case if he were to die, well, actually he probably won't, since he switched to family focus, as he already has two wives. One of which, Sogdian. And he's got 500 troops of his ord plus vassals, and he could have a thousand more if, if the Khans are willing to join up. Which they'll probably will because they're being attacked by somebody who's not of their faith, i.e. infidel. A sword, I see. Excellent choice, my Sheikha, says Master Ramtish, that calls for an assistant cradling several swords in his arms. I also have a couple of examples here. Um, I have a couple of examples here. One must determine huh, what one need and how much one is willing to pay, though they would all serve your highness well. Craft me is something of high quality I can bring me to bring with me to combat. That'll be fifty gold. That's why I extorted the, uh, the clergy and then borrowed the money from the Jews. Because we'll be spending a hundred gold for weapons and in two years' time armor. And then we'll spend another few for more levies to increase our troop numbers for future expansions, particularly to these areas. Especially this one with four holdings makes it attractive for taxation reasons. Far as that approaches me, my liege, I have a great idea for a monument, something to raise our cultural status and make the people notice what a great bully you are. <laughs> it's my first year. I require some gold in your patience, and the work would take a year to complete. Oh, that ain't, that doesn't cost much, so be it. Surprise me. I'm shaking my head. Now they're all, already calling me great, but, oh please, I'm not great. I just had a rough childhood. There's a reason why I'm a legitimized bastard and I don't know my parents. Um, I don't know my parents. Having decided to check up on Master Ramtish's progress, I strolled over to his forge. I did not find him working on a project I commissioned. Instead, working on a different task, specifically with my courtier Furuza, my cartographer. Oh, you lazy guy. I know you're ambitious, but lazy and ambitious don't go together. So, can you please focus on your work? <gasps> the Emir is gone and capable. Oh, it's a really bad case of the flu. There's a possibility he could die before the year is out. And the heir would be led by this old man, who's his father. In which 
Oh, he's got a better military skill than the Neomir right now, as he's bedridden. But he's craven, and I don't think he'll rule for that many years, as he's already got himself a wife. Also, militia training grounds finished, so let's spend it on a steppe warrior lodge. The people of the steppes focus on horse warfare at the expense of foot soldiers, but the finding men at this warrior lodge are more capable than holding their own in battle. So that will be for more heavy infantry and more light cavalry, because we're living in the steppes. And we should have enough money to, um, in two years' time, get, get some armor. I'll speed up in a moment. Oh my goodness, I forgot about the revoking titles. Because, you know, just in case. Especially that Herbat. Who doesn't like me, clearly. But as for the tyranny, people will get over it. It's just one time only. I will never extort you or people of Bukhara ever again. And I'm already pregnant. Good. First child. But I'm still waiting for my sword. Alright. Let's go. This is going to be my first child and I feel completely lost. What if I'm doing something wrong? What if something bad happens? What should I do while I wait for the day of my labor? <laughs> Her bad already hates me more than do, so I just... I need to find something to distract myself from this burden. So I'm just going to be relaxing and general opinion would be going up a bit. Especially those of my council. They'll respect me a bit more. But not so much for the Manichaean because he's calling me a heretic because that's what he is. Which, by the way, Manichaeanism is agnostic religion founded by the alleged prophet Mani, uh, or Mani, uh, was put to death by the Sassanid Shah and Shah Baram I in 277 AD. His religion of light incorporated elements of Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, and Gnosticism. In a game, Manichaeanism is regarded as a Zoroastrian heresy with its own special mechanics. The formal religion head is Yamag, who normally resides in Samarkand. Another religion in Sogdiana, and this religious head name that you see here, Yagmag, is the religious head title. Which I want to see this man right away. Looking for all characters of my religion group. Just to show you the Manichaean. The uh, Yamag. Oh, by the way, what's his name again? So I could type it out. Abu. On. I should say, I don't think I got it right. Or, oh, search on. I uh, don't think you could type Yamag if you're looking for him. No. Well, we'll see him when we see him, okay? So, okay, it's like, it's my religion group, but not my culture group. Okay, this will be a little easier to find him. There he is. That's him, the Yamag. Abu, I'll die. 69 years old and not a real character, but he's Berber, strangely enough. Living all the way over here in Samarkand. This is the Manichaean church. Which it's just recently, you know, been revived. This one died natural death, and there's the prophet himself. He was a scholar, brave, guards, tempered, and content. Yeah, that's him. I like how he said died a natural death, although it clearly says that um, he was put to death. I like how his house is called Manny, and he's the only one. Anyways, let's get back to the series. 
I really hope Amir Jabir is doing well. I wonder if there's if there could be something else I could do for him to help him in his endeavors. I like how I'm going to ask him of his good health, but he's bedridden, so he's really, really sick, so... I would just say, hey, how are you doing? Smoother skin, shining eyes, fuller curves. I, I was never much of a looker, but the changes brought to Sprague's has turned me into a prettier woman than I thought it was possible. It's well worth the nausea. It's gonna make my husband like me more. Amir Jabril was touched by, was really touched by my concern. It assured me that I will be the first to receive news about his health, for better or worse. This is wonderful. And I have sympathy for Muslim religion, so he respects me more. Not to mention, it's like. Yeah, he saw my pregnancy glow when I came in. It's like, hey, I want to know how you're doing with your health. And he's, like he originally hit it, and he's like, Roxana, look at you. You're more beautiful than the last time I've heard of you. <laughs> so it's been a long while since Dadamir gave me so much attention. I'm fairly sure his sudden interest in me might be related to my recent changes, but I cannot deny I'm flattered by it nonetheless. Enjoy while it lasts. Oh. Master Ramtesh's main assistant finally brought me the finished sword I've been waiting for. It is a beautiful and elegant sword. Now I'm expected to see Gohan goes beyond my original expectation. And here's my sword. The Blade of Sheikha Raksana. The well-crafted blade met the behest of Sheikha Raksana of Bukhara by Ramtesh. Just simply call it, um, Blade of Raksana. So you know who the owner is. No need for that Sheikh title. But I believe that's just me being modest. Blade of Roxana. So you know whose sword it is when it's passed down in future generations. So in two years, matter of fact, beginning of January of 771, call for a weaponsmith for armor. No need for jewelry because I'm a Sheikh. There's no reason to be get all braggadocious about it. Step Warrior Lodge just finished. But we cannot spend any more. I will not spend it on walls. Saving the money for armor in two years' time. But the glory will be going up slowly but surely. But me being trusting and kind slows it down. But I chose to be kind in case if I get the events where I'm going to be nice to this person. If he gets well soon. But he's got a mild treatment, so with the combination of this and that, I think he may survive. But now I have sympathy for Muslim religion, so it'll be less likely for anyone to possibly assassinate me. But we'll have that plot discovery chance soon. Through stage war games and large scale exercises, I feel confident I can master one of the main military disciplines. Well, for now, our army just mainly consists of... Well, we just got a militia training ground going up, so... Actually, heavy foot is key. So it'll be more of a heavy infantry leader. Especially some of them that we just... We're going to be introducing more now that we build a step warrior lodge. Final months. Baby's coming, and he, Amir is winning the war, for now. Oh, he'll definitely liberate this region because he's dealing with other matters. Karlugit conquest. Oh, that's why he did that. He took the opportunity while they're away at war. And we are improving relations, so he's starting to like me a bit more and more. No longer he's calling me an infidel. Sogdian brother, welcome to... Welcome back to Sogdiana. Even though it's ruled by an Arab. But remember, you're a heretic. And you call me a heretic, but you sympathize with pagans because you've been living with 
with the Tengris for a while. So here comes the baby. It's a daughter. And more importantly, blood of Sassen will be passed down to my children. So Golshan, easy to pronounce. Alright. I can rank up, but that means I would have to fight a duel, but I am not confident enough about my personal combat skill. What do you Zorastrians think of me? Oh, he's got pneumonia. But it's a mild illness. And since he has a hunting focus, and the combination of the misguided war will benefit health, he's a member of the Ring of Honor. That's the Fighter's Guild. I'll tell you the difference in a moment between those two. Because honestly, I don't want him to die. Otherwise, I can't get the county. And he's going to inherit that. Which, by the way, he's still not better. Also, the weaponsmith is gone because he vanished without a tree. What kind of man is he? Like, I knew he was lazy, and now he's vanished without a trace. He's like, all right, my work here is done. Time to leave. And had an affair with Furuzan, my, my cartographer. Left a child born weak. Bastard. That damn fool. Alright, it's time for my first uh, training. It's one of the ways to improve your combat skill or pick up another trait or even, even better, increase the uh, martial education. At first I've been uncertain about this pregnancy, but after all the pain and tribulation, looking at the sweet innocent creature resting in my arms fills my heart with joy. The maids insist I should leave her in their care now, go back to my duties as Sheikh, huh? Perhaps they are right. Well, she is my daughter, and she can't inherit the rule of Bukhara. So time go to the wet nurses, Goshen. Let Goshen be raised as any daughter of a Sheikh Hashud, nurtured by my servants. Plus, I have some warrior training to tend to. He's still not better. And the old man's in good health my teacher. And I'm sure you viewers know how this works if you saw the past couple of series with Ragusa, Assyria, and India. Chola, also known as. Of how the Fighters Guild works as part of the Orders of Chivalry mod. The monument promised by Fazad is finished. Upon unveiling, a statue of myself is revealed and I notice the crowd smiling and giving me a round of applause. I already got good enough prestige, but I need a little bit of piety to be respected by my mobat. So, it's too much. Remove it. I barely knew... Oh, wow. The Emir uh, named me Court Musician of Sarmakand. How nice of you. I guess you've been red is just told a regent, which is a Sogdian Muslim. He's like, hey, I want you to name Roxana's Court Musician. Which, I don't know, I have a talent for music, and just, at times I would come to Samarkand and just play a little bit of whatever music instruments that song, uh, song the tradition, just to soothe his worries. Now, let me tell you something else about the Sogdian people, of what, you know, contributions they brought to the world. Since they are in the middle of the Silk Road, which I showed you this before. Yeah, they were noted as being the middlemen. My training is over. And now I'm a skilled tactician. Excellent. Increases the martial skill more. And also plus one intrigue and plus one stewardship. 
There's plenty more combat skill, which I still need a bit more of that. So with that, we pick up a bit more on the total gain. So I'll be training a bit more often. And we still have to wait a couple more months in January. So now, so now as you can see, the Silk Road, especially from China through Persia, the Sogdians travel down this road, especially in their prime years, in the uh, from 4th century AD through 7th century AD. That's when the Sogdians were most active on the Silk Road. They they were the middlemen that almost monopolized the entire Silk Road from Persia to China. Ah, the Emir as well, so. What is it like to be Sunni, even though I already have sympathy for the Muslim religions? He was really happy to tell me more about the Sunni faith, while also not sparing a few questions about me being a Zoroastrian. We ended up having a very interesting theological discussion. This is wonderful. Look, you are a patient man, and, but you may be a cruel, but to me, you're not cruel. And look, you picked up sympathy for Mazdan religions. So, maybe I can respect you more. Not only that, so are the, un so are the heretics of mine, unfortunately. But they'll, they'll respect you a bit more, now that you sympathize with, with them. Just the only penalty is just largely a foreigner. So, he's not that bad of a guy after all. But these people, well, he picked up an artifact. Oh, he's the member of the Great Trade League. Okay. Not time for gore yet. But remember, the only person in the world that hates me more than the others is that Harbad. Which I can't get rid of him unless... Well, nobody's willing to assassinate him yet. Unless he commits a crime, or I can revoke him. I mean, he's deceitful, so I better be careful. Under the pressure from the powerful faction, the Emir has agreed to increase the power of the council. So, which means... Even though this is an absolute sheikdom here, but this is a despotic emirate. So now the council power has been empowered, and they can only call upon the war declarations. So it's a bit a little aristocratic. But the liege council, however, not a lot of loyalists. Just three glory hounds and two zealots. Three Muslims two Mazdans. Since we're not building things anytime soon, we might as well collect the taxes. And we're about to spend that money to get armor very soon. Excuse me. He's created the Emirate of Kiva. So, again, he's the Emir of Samarkand, which I'm also a part of. Kiva's to the east. Oh yeah, you're not that good of a commander, but I'll teach you something anyways. Next month. Pregnant again. Hopefully it's a son this time. It's time to continue to your training. Also, another reason why I don't want to rank up yet. You may never know I'll get pregnant at times like these. Manicans are taking over again. Alright, stop. Call for a smith. Now I'm in need of a new set of armor. Find me the finest armor smith around. Also, it should be noted, since, you know, a Muslim rules here. Oh, hold on. Just when I was about to show you something. 
After a, the long period of unrest and sporadic popular uprisings in China has turned into a full-blown civil war, many think that the Emperor Li Daizong is weak and has lost the mandate of heaven. Even as he cowers in Daktong, massive rebel armies are on the move, attacking loyalist strongholds. Still, the rebels have not yet gathered under a single leader, and different factions are even fighting each other. The Silk Road province are haveled, and tributary states can use this opportunity to break free. China will not be able to assist them as they are attacked, since they'd be attacked anyway. House divided. Since the Muslim rules over us, infidel tax. No, the money does not go to me. This is a tax on the non Muslim population. It is larger than regular taxes paid by Muslim worshippers and therefore increases the total tax income. This is for the Emir, not for me. I only get the tax from here. Well, it doesn't help when this Wali over here dislikes me because I fired him and I got rid of him. And Bunyat, commander. But the one thing I would like for him to do... Let me see your traits. I hope he commits a crime where I can have righteous imprisonment and revoke his title so I can control the... The Willia for additional troops. He already has step riding grounds. Lead my men to battle. Well, I'm not fighting any wars anytime soon. So, I respectfully decline. Unfortunately. Because fighting in a war is like a few years away. Ardavan Hammersmith. Envious. Trust. He won't betray me. Fine idea. At first, the signs were small, easily dismissed as coincidences, but now they're becoming too frequent to be ignored. The omens surrounding my pregnancy are terrible. I'm surely cursed. This is a bad omen, but I'm not stressed. The pregnancy of this woman is not happening under auspicious signs and may be doomed to an unfortunate end. Oh boy. I'm in need of protection. Make me a strong and sturdy set of armor. That'll be 50 gold. <laughs> now, mind you, the sand pit that Fighters Guild applies to people of Iranian cultures, Arabic cultures, and African cultures. And that Turkish man you saw from the Ring of Honor, that's applied to his culture group. Um, you know, Baltaic, which is what that Turkish man belongs to. Not only them, but also the Finno Uralic peoples, and the, uh, the Norse, and the East Slavic. That's what they belong to, the, the Ring of Honor Fighters Guild, on that side. Well, I'm already trusting, so why the hell not? This is what I like about, you know, this series for now, the first episode, the way my strategy consists of when running a single county. Oh, sorry about that. Um, we're just trying to make a little bit more money here. Just like with the previous series with Chola, I'm already stubborn, but give it a try. Um, training is over. And I've picked up a trait. I am ambitious. Hmm. Increases a bit of combat skill, but good traits. Good skills. Yeah, I'm ambitious because I want to be a great warrior one day. As there'll be a baby coming. But they say that's a bad omen, so... What's gonna happen? Is my firstborn son gonna be born weak or something? Bunyat, the former sheikh of Bukhara. You'll be known as the Dove because you're a nice guy. And plus, you hold the cloak of Muhammad. Don't let it fall to enemy hands. My mood is and tendency to lash out people is getting worse. I sleep too little and I can't seem to stop worrying. It's a lot of pressure. Now I'm stressed.
It's been many weeks since I commissioned Master Ardavan to work for me, and today my counsel informed me they fled from my lands to the court of my rival Herbad. How dare he betray me! I have a son, but he's born normal. I remember seeing a list of male names on the list of names for the Sogdian culture, which is almost the same as the Persian ones, but there is a name that does exist in Sogdian, and I don't know if that's applied to Persian. Probably because, you know, the founder was Persian. So I will name him Sassan in honor of him. Now I got a bit more piety now, thanks to me being humble. Wasted all that money for nothing. And that Herbad has it. There is an alternate way. Because I don't want to challenge him to the duel because it's an uncivilized thing to do. But there are people that are willing to assassinate him. And you can't just... Wait a minute. We can arrest him, but check his garrison. 427 of garrison. Don't have enough troops. Don't move in to arrest him, but there is another way. And plus, he's brave, so I gotta get this man to fight me, even though I'm not really in the best of. And he's got my armor, so he's got some protection. So that armor is mine. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Look, I just want to antagonize it, just simply for the sake of it. I'll do another strategy later on. We just need this um, levy size increase as the max. I mean, when we get the maximum, I mean, we'll barely have enough. He's answered to my letter. I mean, there's so much to learn from him. He really appreciates to take some time off his duties. I wish I could in order to teach him about statesmanship. He likes me more and more. So it's less likely he'll be, I don't know, revoking my title because I'm a Zoroastrian. I mean, he sympathizes with him. I mean, he shouldn't. Although I can increase the arrest chance by... Um, Suppress Revolt, which is increases arrest chance, but not willing to risk it yet. My daily routine involves repeatedly swinging my blade at a training dummy. However, I can learn so much from fighting an inanimate enemy, and the practice gets dreadfully dull after a while. I could use someone to train with. We're friends now. Zoroastrian uprising in the tide of Mirit. Oh yes, it's time for my training again. I'm still not confident enough that I feel that I have the right combat skill to start getting into duels. But I would love to duel other people. So here's what's going to happen. Even though the man may be brave and he could... I don't know. He could potentially beat me in a duel. Because, you know, that's for luck. And, uh, let's just say I want to make this man, but I don't want to start the duel, I want him to start the duel, I mean, I want him to challenge me, there you go, that's the word you're looking for. So my studies and training have taught me the general tactics of flanks and center. And I can hardly master everything. Must learn to create choke points. I always pick this one because I always feel that it works out from the past series. Oh yeah, just to, you know, try to finish what I was trying to say earlier. When starting a, a playthrough as a single county, I always start off slow. Just do whatever it takes to make more money. And then 
and then um, use that money to increase the levy size in which one day you will use the said levy size to expand it to other areas. Pay attention to your teacher's traits. I got a little money out of it. If we can get up to 200, we'll spend it on step riding grounds next. Don't worry, you'll get yours one day, Herbad. And now I'm just, but I've yet to improve my fighting skills. But I am just. But I'm a bit worried about me having that stressed trait. I mean, there are ways of getting rid of it. And I am not confident about my husband's diplomacy skill. I don't think he has what it takes to help me get rid of it. Which I'm talking about it when you have the Soul Traits mod. And he just built a, uh, a trade post. That province was Zoroastrian. Now it's turned to Kurmazta. Matter of fact, that Kurmazta has gained momentum. It's become a heretic stronghold, so... I fear that revolt is going to be very, very likely. And he started a war for Kashka. I mean, it's a tributary, so he's going to have to help him. If the uprising starts, I will do whatever it takes to help my leech to put a stop to it. Because if they succeed, that means all of Samarkand will fall, including mine in Bukhara. Which kind of makes my plans to try to expand into Kiva, well, we've got to accelerate it. But I also would love to get rid of the Herbat by any means. Unless we alternatively just assassinate him and just be done with it. Even though I would much prefer to, I don't have his titles revoked. They'll be willing to get rid of it for a price. Not right now. So again, we may have a Kurmaz uprising in our hands. And he's going to be laughing it off. I'll be having my third child soon. It never hurts to have more children. Oh yeah, there's just another bloodline out there, since we have the assassin bloodline. There's these guys, Karen, which they have Parthian blood, founded by Erdogan Karen Palev. And this one makes it more attractive. Periodically attracts the servitude of great warriors, if you're a Zoroastrian. But too bad he doesn't have enough children circulating, but if there is one way to how to, you know, inherit that bloodline. I would love for my daughter to be matrilineally married to one of these people who has that bloodline, but there's not that many Zoroastrians out there. If they were to lose territory by the Abbasids, then, like if they lose their land, then maybe it'll be easier for them to marry into our dynasty, and then we'll have two bloodlines. That would be great. Oh, and here comes those raiders. Not a problem. I always knew my ambition would help me to reach great places and acquire some wealth. Throwing away is always a nice bonus. Gold, diamonds, or oh, oh, wait. A little more money. If that religious uprising, uh, unrest goes away next May, then that makes the uprising a little less likely, but... No, it's going to spring up at any minute now. Spend it on step riding grounds. The step is ideal for warfare on horseback, and the nomadic warrior cultures of these lands know how to press this advantage. These riding grounds produce extra light cavalry and horse archers. 
some more light cavalry, and we get some horse archers. Let us talk strategy. I have a high martial skill. Alright, thank you. And now he's created the third emirate, the Kotal, that region. So now he's a three emir, triple emir, whatever fastable term you want to use. And because of that, he's wasted all of his money. And he lacks the funds for his troops mobility, which isn't good. It doesn't help when the Silk Road, you know, has been reduced to half of the value. Time for my training again. I need to be a trained fighter. That's what I'm trying to improve it with. Once I become a trained fighter, then I will start. I start going up. On the ranks. Don't come to Bukhara or there'll be trouble. Second daughter, Nana. Well, I'm ready to fight. So again, his duplicitous nature may be a secret to his friends and family. It's quite clear to me. I should expose his lack of honesty so that everyone knows to be wary of his forked tongue. He's the most disgraceful herbat. Made him angry, but I would like for him to fight against me. Like, what are you afraid of? I want that armor. Oh, he'll be willing to revoke it, but of course, that would um, hurt the vassal opinion of 15. He'll be okay with it and receive praise, but I would like to revoke his title, but he won't give it up unless he commits a crime. That would, you know, give me righteous imprisonment options. So. Oh, wait a second. If I were to get rid of that herbat, I won't get my armor that I've spent my hard-earned money on. But do you want to be a warrior or not? Oh, and also, if I do arrest him, I can seize that artifact and take the armor from him, so... But I need more men. Your day of reckoning will be coming, okay? It will come. Yeah, my first war will be against a Herbad rather than somebody else of a different faith. Zoroastrians are still up. Oh no, they're going down now. Improved relations. Tell you what. I'm not confident enough to feel that if we try to arrest him, he's likely going to rebuild him. So, increase the levy size and up the reinforcement rate. Get them up now. I've given him two years, alright? When it's 775, attempt to arrest him. Oh, look. A Buddhist now runs the place. Well, I figured the Herbad likes me enough now, so... I need to start swaying him. Maybe I can pick up the sympathy for Eastern religions trait as well. Since I'm not really a Zealous Zoroastrian type. I mean, Roxana's a nice girl. She'll be nice to everybody. And our riding grounds is complete.
What did you do to make them mad? My teacher died. Consumption. And this was his last message that he gave me before he died, so... Doesn't matter. Oh boy. He's really causing damage to the place. If only he raided Kiva more, then it'll be good, because I would love to expand to that area. Which, of course, I need the money for it. So that's why we're collecting taxes more. Hey. Well, I don't know. You said you were to be a Buddhist, but he's trying to learn, okay? And he is a member of the Sravaka Sangha. Their, um... Monastic society. So, in his young life, he's realized... He's like, I'm a very sinful person. I need to get right. But his process will be very, very slow because of his poor diplomacy skill. This could be a mistake, because... Opposites. Okay, he'll be coming in, and... Um, I tried my best to be counselor with Sagarak, but we simply couldn't come to an agreement about our mutual fascination for battle and strategy. Well, of course not. He's in the stewardship, so... I provoked him, so... That didn't work. They're calming down a little now, even though it's a heretic stronghold. If they try to spread Kronomas to the Bukhara, then that's a problem. Yeah, it's a wonder how that faith is starting to catch on amongst the Sogdians. Remember, 775, her bad gets his. I don't want to revoke him because he will be moving to another realm, and I can't arrest him that way. I need him. I want him to know my wrath. Get a most disgraceful or bad. Come on, duel me. You said you were brave. You got the armor. <sighs> Figures. Now the Vaginates are taking care of that little problem. You got enough manpower to deal with a possible uprising, and I'll be glad to assist you. We don't want Summerkand to fall. Around Spa board. Still waiting for my teacher. Is there anyone on the bounty board? There's one. The Mazdak. Hmm. I'll think about it, but don't take too long because you'll miss your opportunity. Hey, wait a minute. I'm the heir to William. What happened to uh, Bunyat? Bunyat. I mean, uh, he's still here, isn't he? Oh, yeah. I should have looked at friend. Yeah. yeah, he's still here. He's just a commander. Because he was originally the heir to it, but I'm the heir now. Does anybody want to get rid of him? No? Well, if he does something bad, I'll be sure to arrest him. And of course, he would. He'll say maybe. Okay, but remember, I'll think about it. Just give me a couple of minutes for me to think about that. Doesn't help that I'm stressed. But there are ways of getting rid of stress, but do I want to sacrifice combat skill for carousing? Then again, they could give me a mission that says, hey, switch to war focus. And 
Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And plus, I'm gonna get my armor soon. That would up the combat skill a little, so as a way of making it up. Okay. Carousing it is, then. And I know who's the first person to invite. Hey, Javril. Come here. I know we're good company together, but we should be friends. There comes my teacher. Unfortunately, I cannot invite you to Merry Maker at this time, but thank you for your kind invitation. Hmm. Okay. How about you? Just invite all the Mazdans. Because one of you guys are going to be my friends. We'll eventually be confidants for this. For my future plans. He's coming. He's not. He's coming. Okay, those two. Wakushak and Hashem. Just come to the private feast and help me get rid of stress. Even though I have to make two of you friends. Because we all have to get along here. Yeah, Pagana's been expanded. Thanks to the Vaginids. He has a child, yeah, he has a son. Named after the father who's still alive. He's a student of fiqh, Islamic law. No need to be zealous. No, 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 I like to keep the sympathy. The people of Samarkand have embraced the Sunni faith. So the Kurmazdas has been kicked out, so now the people of Samarkand are now Sunni. I told you Islamization of that region would be slow. And my fighting skills improve. And do that again and maybe you'll become a trained fighter one day. The guests have arrived. It's time for the carousing and the merriment to begin. Who's going to be my friend? Husband Dadamir explains that he's captivated by the grace and strength of hunting birds and begs me for a bird. Surely even a spouse of the Sheikha must be allowed to enjoy the noble pastime of falconry, he says. Be an aspiring falconer, okay. I'll take it. Spends a little, but don't worry. I'll get some of that money back. We're best friends now. You may be a heretic, but we're going to be friends. Exceptional year at the tannery of Bukhara, so... Aha! More money! But I'm getting sick, unfortunately. Probably had too much to drink. And haven't got rid of stress. And do you think it's rabies? Yeah, sure. The chancellor will continue to do the work. Okay, huh. I guess I had... I guess it was something bad I ate during the feast. It ain't appropriate. Yeah, things work differently in Zoroastrianism. Where if you refuse that type of business, then um, you'd lose a bit of piety. But we'll do that again in April. End of April. Alright, next month. Alright, Harbad. This is your last chance. We have the manpower to stop you. Because that garrison of yours, we have enough for it. Okay, we got him. And now, give me that. And now he's released. And guess what? Well, he's rebelling. 
Okay, that means he, now he's a traitor to Bukhara. So we will besiege the temple, which will take a while, and then we'll revoke his title and replace him with a more competent Arbad. That also means now I'm a tyrant to some people, just for taking an artifact. Yep, the armor is mine. After four years, it's all mine. I should stop antagonizing him because we'll be getting rid of him soon. You're the most disgraceful, just insulting you even further as the siege is ongoing. But don't worry, Amir, it's, it's none of your business. It's just a little issue I had to settle with as I put on my armor. Just a little matter I had to attend to. Just when I was about to cancel it. I could falsely confess faith and become a Sunni while secretly Zoroastrian, but no reason for that. He likes me too much and he sympathizes with the Mazdans. We got 10 gold out of this siege looted the temple a bit, even though we took a bit of losses when disease came. Well, you're going back to prison. But only this time, your title is revoked. Because you are a traitor to Bukhara and to the Zoroastrian faith. So, here's the new Herbad, Adivan. Brave, kind, see, a real good person. I mean, whenever he passes away, or some other unfortunate circumstance that may happen to him, you're going to be the new Nova. Now, just to complete my revenge against you, I will take more of your money as I will banish you to the realm. Never to be seen around here again. Don't show your ugly face around here anywhere else. Wait a minute, he's not ugly, he's born attractive. That finally takes care of that issue. And look at all this money. Oh yeah, we could definitely use this. Uh, oh, I need you to build these walls fast. It'll be done in August. And now that it's peacetime, hey, want to come to carousing? I'll bring in the Buddhist too, if he's willing, despite the little, well, misunderstanding. The Amir ain't coming because he refused that offer before. He's not coming, and neither is he. Well, how about you, fellow Sorastrian? If not, well, call the new Herbad. Yep. How about you, Herbad? Are you coming to the feast? Even though his stance towards me is neutral. He doesn't like me very much because of reasons. There's still a bounty on his head? Okay. I'll get to that in a second. Because I'm a trained fighter now. I will hunt him down after the feast, okay? And the Herbat is coming. Don't call anymore because, you know, it hurts the prestige a bit. Maybe we'll call the Emir here next year and hopefully we'll become best friends. 
You see, if you were to ask a Zoroastrian today, like if you were to ask them, it's like, what do you think about the Muslims, or what do you think of the Christians, or the Buddhists, or anyone for that matter? And the Zoroastrian would mostly, most likely tell you, we are very friendly with them. We tolerate them. Okay, we built up the walls, and... Oh boy. Um, I like how it still says Heretic Stronghold, despite the fact it's Sunni now, so... That uprising ain't gonna happen, but if it does, it's just gonna be in the form of a peasant revolt. Since it's in his faith. Increase the more of the militia training ground, which it'll be done in January. Light infantry is good for sieges, I think. If I remember correctly. And we should have enough troops to go west. I just need to get rid of that stress trait. Then I can start dueling and start ranking up. My new Arabat is my best friend, unlike the previous. <laughs> Still haven't got rid of. But I don't know if I want to risk it, because you know how lethal these duels can be? Well, he's just as stressed as I am. So, the reason why there's a bounty on his head? Rival. Yeah, his opinion is angered. Oh, I see what caused this rivalry and caused Hashem to put a bounty on him. He started antagonizing him for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of his bad traits and and the fact you got an ambitious... I was about to say Harbab, but no, it's Baram. Because he's Mazdaki. So, these two clearly do not like each other. Him or the Kagan. Which I don't know what that issue was about. He's a member of the Hermetic Society. He's not, because he's pagan. Whatever the issue is, unless he's been antagonizing him too. Actually, hold on. Look again. Oh, no, no, no. It's my opinion of him versus me. Okay, okay. I get it. I get it. So I'll try to bounty hunting thing. Okay, let's close the episode with, you know, the bounty hunt. So again, lives over in the east in areas that are of a Buddhist uh, majority. So it's like, so I hear there's a bounty. Don't you worry, Hashim. I'll deal with your, um, deal with your rival. Plus, I need money. So, it better pay me good. It's not wanted alive, it's wanted dead. Um, Baram Vios has a run away and stand before me. The man is brave indeed to, to accept my charge, despite his obvious doom. This should be a good sport and pay me nicely. For glory. Again, his combat skill is very bad because he's stressed. And I'm stressed too, but I'm a trained fighter. And I have my weapon and armor at the ready. Okay. Enemy's in front of me. He's looking directly at me and getting to receive my attack. Getting ready to receive my attack. Target the center. Whoa! Still the death just came in an abrupt den. My target <laughs> this died at the end of my play. Justice served and I will be rewarded. I'm sure some of you viewers may not be familiar and this is probably your first time watching this series. This was a duel to the death, as it was, as this was a bounty hunt. Rarely this happens where it's just one and done. Most of the time it's like, okay, you work, hit this body part, he's injured, keep working on the body part till he gets wounded, and keep hitting him, and then he's severely injured. Keep hitting him, and then he dies. But now, one shot, one kill. Wealth and glory are mine. So I get, I'm paid 50 gold, and got more glory. And fighting skills are improved, as I'm on a path to improve my combat skills. Leo's life 
lie lifeless on the ground next to his still warm body is their shattered weapon from the fight. I pick it up and keep it as a trophy. He won't be needing it anymore. One more to the pile. And some people would think, it's like, why were you facing a man of a religious club? Well, allow me to explain to you Zoroastrian people here. The man was a heretic. And he was dealing with, and his rivalry was with a heretic. It's just they had a, a bit of a, a disagreement. That's just saying. And now, a bit more richer. And again, I'm still a train fighter. It's just you're on the path to improve it. Or I will eventually become a, a skilled fighter. Which should be enough to start breaking up a bit. Not to mention, first deal you know, duel experience. Every duel you take part of increases the combat skill more and more. And there's my rival, which now he resides over there. So which made me wonder, well, I can't duel him because I don't have the war focus anymore. Yeah, but just let him live there in exile up in the mountains. No one's going to remember him. Troop numbers keep increasing, and then um, on the next episode, I may be contemplating on, well, revoking that title, if, as he still says, maybe. And, of course, in next April, I must get rid of that stress trait by carousing. So, um, we hope you um, enjoy this episode as there's a revolt going on over in the Abyssin Empire, which, again, they got a lot of wars going on. What's this about? This is a tyranny war, and interesting enough, there is a Zoroastrian uprising in the revolt, which I, they do have the numbers to take them on, but which means it's, could there be another independent Zoroastrian realm in today's part of Azerbaijan? So as for this rebellion, the Caliph is winning. Should he win, he's going to revoke all their titles, including the Zoroastrians who took part of that rebellion. In which, in which I honestly hope, if he's part of that rebellion too, then he gets, you know, his title revoked, and his children will be off to other lands, wherever, or even come to my court since I'm a Zoroastrian. They're probably more inclined to go there. And then maybe my daughters can finally marry to these children, have that bloodline, and then the grandchildren will be the first to have these close kin marriages, and then the two bloodlines are together. That is the reason why this series is started with a female instead of a male. It's all about bloodline inheritance. So. I'm sure on the second episode, we'll finally start ranking up, as the current champion so far is a better fighter than I, and he's in perfect shape, as well as expanding out west to Kiva, to Dashhoods, and possibly them too, despite the fact that they're Zoroastrian, because I need to have a little bit more strength, because one day, despite our friendship, even though we're not best friends yet. We just need to gather more strength before we can get kick these guys out of the region of Sogdiana. Because you could say Roxana right now is starting to plant the seeds of the new Sogdian resistance after the old one failed during the conquests. So we hope you enjoyed this first episode of Sogdiana. So it's a, it's a pretty good start. It's slow, but it's good, teaching you a bit of history, and uh, building levies by getting money by any means necessary, including the local resource, and as well as befriending other people and having sympathy for another man's religion as he sympathizes with me. So all that and more in the second episode. Until then, so long for now.